Hi students today we are going to discuss the next poem of class 12th Dover Beach written by Matthew Arnold So before moving to the poem let us discuss something about the poet English Victorian poet Matthew Arnold's most famous poem Dover Beach is a dramatic monologue where the poet expresses his frustration and the hopelessness of the modern chaotic world he also expresses his view that his kind of situation where there is neither joy nor love nor light no certitude no peace nor help for pain has been created by the decline of faith religious faith to be precise the poem begins with the straightforward description of a nature and the speaker calling his beloved to see the beautiful sea and to hear the sound of the waves the setting is inside a room maybe a hotel on the coast of the english channel near the english town dover the speaker and his beloved are looking outside their window at the french coast across the sea let us see what is the background used in this poem arnold wrote dover beach around 1850 at a time when faith in god and religion seemed threatened by the developments of scientific understanding and evolutionary theory especially how to think this is a time in britain the industrial revolution happened the people began mostly depend on science and technology instead of religion Although it's a poem about Arnold's response to a spiritual crisis it begins by capturing a moment in the physical world where Arnold is looking out towards France from a Dover beach how does he convey a sense of tranquility and intense melancholy in those first 14 lines can a poem be both sad and beautiful think about a pathetic fallacy when a poet projects human feelings such as sadness onto inanimate objects for example the sea incidentally notice how the first 28 lines are arranged loosely as two sonnets and then the final stanza begins a little like a sonnet but after the first eight lines it finishes with a powerful climactic ninth line The poem may deal with the sadness, misery and pain, but there is also hope and consolation as Arnold turns to his companion at the start of the first final stanza. Now let us move to the poem Dava Beach by Arnold. The sea is calm tonight. The tide is full. the moon lies fair upon the streets the literal meaning of the stanza is it is night the calm and quiet sea is filled with water at the time of high tide the moon is shining brightly that is called fair fair means brightly upon the narrow english channel english channel is the strait on the french coast the light gleams and is gone and the cliffs of england strand glimmering and vast out in the tranquil bay our speaker is staring at the french coast some 20 miles away on the other side of the channel he sees the light on the french coast gleaming and now as the light has gone off he concentrates on the english shore instead the famous cliffs steep rocks on the sea shore of dover stand tall with their large wavering reflections in the quiet sea so let's move to the next one 
కమ్ టు ద విండో స్వీట్ ఈస్ ద నైట్ ఎయర్ ఓన్లీ ఫ్రమ్ ద లాంగ్ లైన్ ఆఫ్ స్ప్రే వేర్ ద సీ మీట్స్ ద మూన్ బ్లాన్స్ ల్యాండ్ ద స్పీకర్ ఆస్క్ హిజ్ మిస్ట్రస్ టు కమ్ టు ద విండో టు ఎంజాయ్ ద స్వీట్ నైట్ ఎయర్ కమింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ వేర్ ద సీ మీట్స్ ద మూన్ ల్యాండ్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్రాన్స్ listen you hear the granting roar of pebbles which the waves draw back and fling at their return up the high strand he now asks her to listen to the continuous and irritating sound of the pebbles drawn by the waves the waves are drawing the stones backward to the sea and then again throwing it means fling them back on the high shore strand on their return journey see the first stanza the sea is calm tonight now you go for a comparison the sea and the world now the sea is okay the world is okay the tide is full the moon lies fair everything goes well in the world upon the streets he is enjoying it he is enjoying the world here you have to compare the sea as a world as the world then the routine in the world changes that's already i mentioned in the introduction the industrial revolution happened in britain so that the people began to change their mind they stopped depending on religious beliefs god they started taking advantage of science and technology so in the first answer he expressed here about a world that existed so it is the first stanza can be called as a love poem or he is enjoying he is narrating the beauty of the nature the beauty of the sea but now it changes what is the change that happened in the world because of industrial revolution the people stopped believing in god the people stopped depending on religion they are changing the people themselves they are changing it started a new ideology that is consumeristic mentality using others so now in the second stanza it will be clear for you the last line of the first stanza we can read begin and cease and then again begin with a tremulous cadence slow and bring the eternal note of sadness in the sound of the waves begin and stops and then again begins the trembling rhythm continues slowly but now it brings the eternal note of sadness the monotonous rhythm of the waves make the speaker depressed the tone of the poem now changes from cheerful to melancholy the first stanza he was enjoying the nature but by the end of the stanza that mood of the poem completely changes it changes into the sadness so in the second stanza it would be more clear to you Sophocles long ago heard it on the again and it brought into his mind the turbid ebb and flow of human misery we find also in the sound a thought hearing it by this distant northern sea by the continuous movement of the waves the speaker says it reminds me about something what is that it is that a human sadness the human sufferings and here he recollects about a historical writer that is 
Sophocles while he was sitting on the on the sea he also heard the same Sophocles also heard the same sound sitting on the shore of the Aegean sea that brought to his mind Sophocles mind the picture of human sufferings like muddy water going in and out that means a band flow our speaker has also found a feeling of sadness hearing similar sound beside the northern sea far away from sophocles aegean sea now the situation is different it is not about sophocles the author is sitting somewhere near the dover and he is also hearing the same sound what sophocles experienced the same experience our poet is also having now let us move to the third stanza the sea of faith was once too at full and round earth shore lay like the folds of a bright girdle fold human faith the religious faith and faith in fellow people once covered the earth like sea water it was at its fullest as the tide is now faith covered the earth like the folds of a bright girdle folding well the comparison suggests that it was not loose but tightly attached to this world it was the time when faith made everything easy and solved many problems made people united and brought meaning to life he believes even though he was an atheist he believes that it was faith that bound the people together it was the faith in a religion or in the faith in the fellow people that bound the people together that was the reason behind the unity but now he says but now i only hear its melancholy long withdrawing roar retreating to the breath of the night wind down the vast yet just drear and naked shingles of the world the speaker regrets that those days are now past faith is fading away from the society just like the wave is from the shore now he only hears the sorrowful roar of the retreating steps of faith with the receding tides it only leaves behind the chill night wind whistling over the desolate beach with the dull edges of the cliff and the raw pebbles the poet here creates a fearful picture of the underlying nakedness of the colorful modern world now let us move to the last stanza ah love let's be true to one another for the for the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams so various so beautiful so new hath really neither joy nor love nor light nor certitude nor peace nor help for pain does desolate speaker now again turn to his beloved and urges her to be faithful to each other the dreamy modern world which seems so beautiful with its varieties it is not really a source of joy love light certainty peace or help for pain for the speaker the chaotic artificial world does not induce much hope for him and we are here as on the darkling plain swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight where ignorant armies clash by night now the speaker compares this world to a dark place where we completely unaware of what we are doing we are in a confused struggle as if ignorant soldiers are fighting with each other in the darkness 
This is Matthew Arnold's assessment of the morally corrupted modern world fully of vanity. So this is about the explanation of the poem. Now we will look into the themes. What are the main themes the poet discussed in this? Already I had mentioned it was the time when the industrial revolution began in Britain. So people began to depend on science and technology. They, lay, they lost their faith in God and religion. So it can be the poem speaks about the loss of faith in God and religion. The poet explains the gradual loss of man's faith in, in a grand and suggestive simile. The poet has compared faith in religion to the sea that surrounds the world. The sea has once the world was like the sea or the faith was like the sea. The world was covered with the faith as the sea covers the world. It was covered completely. The sea is equal to the face. But now what you see is it is just coming to the shore and it has changed as the influence of industrial revolution or because of the inventions that happened. It can be say the Darwinism, the theory of Darwinism, the theory of evolution. It can be also said. So the next poem he says, the next theme he says, Love was the last solace. What we can depend on or what can be the solution for all the problems that we are facing. The world, the world is chaotic. We cannot find peace. We cannot find help for our pain. We cannot find a solution for all the problems. But he suggests love is the only solution for all these problems. You love each other. You trust each other. You have faith each other. That's why by the end of the poem he requests his mistress he requests his partner to be faithful to him love him without love between a man and a woman the world or without love between the human beings the world is a confusing and as lethal as a night battle so the main two themes that discussed in the poem is the first one was the loss of faith in God and religion. Second one, love as the last solution for all the problems. So, when we speak about the background, again we can have a revision about it. Why did he wrote such a poem? Already I mentioned it was the time when the industrial revolution started. The science began to play a heavy role, a lead role in human's life. At that time also it began the popularity of Darwin's theory of evolution. Till the time the people believed that everything was created by God. But the theory of evolution suggests that the natural selection it came automatically, not by any influence of any power. It is was a natural process. It was a biological process that happened. And how the, that is how the people originated in the world. That is called a theory of evolution. By the time by time the people was created by the nature, not by any other powers. So this is about the poem. So once again I am we are concluding here. Once again I am reminding you that you please read the poem, read your workbook, complete the exercise work. If you have any doubt regarding this, you can command comment in the comment box. I will solve this. 
ओके थैंक यू